Hello everyone and welcome to Day Trader S&P 500. Today is Sunday, October 10th, 2021. This is Dale Woodson, editor of Woodson Wave Report. We're going to focus in on the S&P today. I want to start with the uh, with the chart here, a little fast uh, review of our primary wave count in black, which labels this decline as a one down with the circle there. You see a two up with that circle there. And then on the third wave down is developing. And it's a one right there with the parentheses and then a two up. You see our targets there. That's our primary count. Our top alternate count labels this entire decline from the September 2nd high to the October 4th low as one. You see in red there with the circle, okay? This is two up. There's the target for 2, 44, 43. Um, the make or break, where is this wrong? The red, when it goes above 45, 45. I'll backtrack a little bit. When is the preferred count in black wrong? Wave two here up cannot go above the start of one here. So that's the make or break for the two high right there. The 4465. Okay, that's all. We always know where we're wrong. And then our uh, our purple is the bullish count, which says this decline ended on October 4th. That's it. Now we're starting a new bull wave up. From there we have one up, two down, and three up. Okay. Obviously this decline here would be a four and would have to hold above the wave one high of 4358. So therefore that's our make or break. I want to get into that real quickly here. But first, I want to thank you guys for subscribing to our website. There's our website subscriptions there. You can see, I want to show you guys our disclaimer and our awards over the years. There we go there. We'll make sure the uh, logo gets in the picture. There we go. And I don't even know if I loaded that uh, video. So I thank you guys for uh, liking and subscribing. And um, there's the like button. We appreciate all the patronage to the channel. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I want to get into that count. Let me get over here. We got three wave counts right there. Okay, and we'll get into this um, hourly where did it go here? Yeah, we'll go to the we'll go to the ten minute first, because well, really, what I want to go to. Sorry for the confusion here, because I want to set this up. Okay, here we are at uh, this is our uh, pre market open that we give our monthly subscribers every day. We give we've been getting two a day for almost the entire uh, month of September and into October. But I really want to focus on uh, here. You can see our wave table where we got the bull market ending at least three degrees of trend, possibly six, uh, going all the way back, <clears throat> excuse me, to 1987. I think it will at least, it will at least correct the move up from the pandemic low, possibly more, but we're looking at that for a minimum. These still have to be proven one at a time, okay? And then the bear market has begun. Uh, a note here, bear markets are identified with letters and bull markets with um, numbers but these are uh, these are internal wave counts to the larger ABC looking for a larger in the bear market an A down a B up and a C down it appears that it's going to be a five down three up five down but it's still pretty early and too early to tell for sure okay but I wanted to really focus on here the uh, there we go the the Fibonacci time spirals, the one from the September 2nd all-time high. We've had no slippage up into this 34-day date. And then on uh, the 7th, Wave 2 made a high at 10.22 in the morning. So that was 52 minutes of slippage, if you will. Otherwise, this thing has been perfectly accurate. When these spirals fail, it's usually the 34 that fail. So we're really focused on the 10.6 high and the actual 10.7 high if it goes higher and then you know our make or break points on that but this one shows us for 55 days after the all-time high should mark a low it could be a panic spike low doesn't have to be but should be in that time area and then the one from the March 4 low 
that has zero slippage it has one minute it's got almost a hundred percent accuracy as you can see and it's calling for October 23rd which is a Saturday so we'd expect this one to bottom anywhere from Friday to Monday in that time frame we combine these together and we get from Friday 10:22 to I think that is uh, Wednesday or Thursday 10:27. let me just look here that is Wednesday so that's where we're looking for a low and that's why I'm really going to focus on the short term with this 10.6 high in that period right there. So I want to show you guys, here is the 10.4 low. Let's play out the uh, the bull count for you bulls out there. We can count a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? We can call that 1. Let me get a Fibonacci extension on that, okay? And there is 1 or close to it. That would be 2. And 3 is a near perfect 1618. You can see right there. I'll put the labels on it for you guys. Okay, there's the 10-4 low. There's one. I'm playing out the bull market count in purple on that other sheet. And five would be up here on that pick. Okay, so five, I'm sorry, four cannot go, go below the wave one high. You can see it right here. Let me get back to that pick. Okay, and uh, is that it here? Yeah, and there's the bull in purple. Okay, three. There's where we're looking at four. That was the S&P cash. The futures opened uh, maybe three hours ago as I'm doing this. Let's look at, this is a 10 minute chart and there is that October 4 low. We can get to the futures here. There is that 10 4 low. Let's do this again. Okay, and we'll get, let's get into the fourth. There we go. There's our one. There's our two, and you can see three is a near one six one eight. Let's put the uh, the numbers in, and here we have a one up, a two down, a three up, and look what happened in the future. So let me put that dotted line there. That dotted line is the top of one, and the futures have negated the bull count. Okay, do uh, futures and cash diverge? Yes. <clears throat> but not usually, but they do. So it's really worth watching going into Monday's action. What's going to happen? The bull count in the futures market has already been negated. The cash market won't open for another 12 hours from now. Okay, so we will see where that goes. Okay, and then we'll go back to the larger picture here. Here is the uh, hourly chart and the red is the primary and um, it ends up with a black one here and a two and then a one and two. It's a series of ones and twos. What I'm getting at is if the bullish count is negated, we're either entering wave three of three down, which should be the strongest wave, or we're in this larger wave two. Let me get that in here for you guys. This quick little retracement, the secondary count or the top alternate secondary bullish count. And you can see that if that is a one down, there is where two is a 618, it's 4445. We'll go back to these pictures here, okay? And you can see right there, 4443 might be off by one, but the 4465 is the make or break for that alternate account. Really, not a whole lot has changed since our last video. We're really focused on, on this area right in here the 10 and that's wrong that's a 17 it should be a 7 my apologies for that there I I fixed it in our newsletters to our subscribers and this is from the, the 7th that is 10 7 the date is 10 6 the turn date and it's 10 7 right there okay so that's what we're looking at I wanted to touch really quick on I may not have it up here and well Tesla hit uh right at our, um, our Fibonacci 786 at 80 something. So we're going to watch that really closely. But I want to get back in here with the Fibonacci time spiral. This is key right here. We're looking at this 10.6. We had a 10.7, not 17 high at 10.22 in the morning. That was 52 minutes of slippage, if you will. So if, if that holds, then we expect... Wave three of three of at least 
two degrees and possibly three degrees of trend unless this alternate count is playing out in red where this whole thing is one down two up can go all the way up to but not past the 45 45 all-time high okay so a move above this high here 4465 would knock out the black count the primary count and put the red count into play and give more validity to the bullish count in purple but the futures have already negated that so we'll see what the especially tomorrow monday brings and i'll do a bigger update on all of the uh the other indexes and stocks and stuff like that i'll throw tesla in there too as i usually do i may even do that tomorrow morning but i just wanted to give a quick update especially with the futures let's take another uh another peek at that at that if we can and this is a little bit behind but yeah that that move right there and that was right after the futures opened um that negated that four there cannot go below the one so it's not a four this count is now wrong and that's the bullish count and the s&p cash we'll see if it diverges or it follows suit should be interesting to watch i'll get a new update out uh, relatively soon this week until next time take care everyone